Hey guys, Henny Morton here from Flip Normals. In this video, we are going to take a look at some of the newest features in ZBrush 2020, which was just released. Before we get into that, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So ZBrush 2020 has a lot of really cool features in it, and some of the ones which are really going to change the way I'm working. The first one is the extractor brushes. This, this is a series of brushes which are fantastic. It essentially means that you can create alphas incredibly quickly from capturing what's on the model. This has been possible in the past, but it's been very convoluted. And with the extractor brushes, you can literally just drag and it's there. So we found the extractor brushes under brush and we have extractor here. I'm using extractor drag rect. So the way we actually capture something here is we hit the G key and this changes the mode to this like cyan texture or the cyan color. So if we now drag on the model, you can see it's going to capture the area within this circle. So now it's going to just take a second and it's going to be over here. And now we have this really nice uh, 128 by 128 16 bit alpha. So we can use this now on somewhere else on a model right away. Really, really cool stuff. If you want to change, um, if you want to change how sharp it is, you can set the focal shift down. So now it's a square. So this just depends on what you want. Yeah, this is really powerful. If you want to capture an area like this, hit the G key and capture this. Now we can uh, we can work this area up. We can sculpt out like this, set the intensity a bit up. We can do this, and then uh, we can capture this entire area. Really useful for this kind of stuff. This is a fantastic way of doing it, and it's very similar to how we made the skin kit. So now we can hit the G key and just uh, capture all this. And there we go. Now we have this entire thing right here. So uh, extractor brushes, incredibly powerful. Next up, we're going to take a look at the thumbnail over here. This is a really cool feature, which we've been looking at, looking for, to get for years. Essentially, it is a feature where you can now just see the thumbnail of it in a tiny, tiny window. Really useful for evaluating the design. It's so hard to see what the design actually looks like. You could, of course, go into like flip the colors, make this black, turn off polypaint and all that. But it's really handy to be able to see the model like this as well. If you go under uh, preferences and then we go on a thumbnail, you can now turn it off as well if you don't like it, which also makes sense. And you can also turn off silhouettes. So now you're just seeing a tiny little view of what the what the, the character is going to look like over here. It's kind of like when you're painting in Photoshop um, where you, you want to get away from your model a little bit, just at a distance so you can better evaluate what it looks like as a whole. I mean, you've seen us do this a million times in our ZBrush sculpting videos where we you know, we press the V key to flip the colors when there's no poly paint on to get our own kind of silhouette view. But this just, you know, you have it at the, it just, just it's always there so you never have to worry about like setting it up or anything. You can also make it bigger or smaller by doing this. A little tip as well is that uh, it can be a good idea just to put these two guys in the interface, just drag them over here. Uh, then you just have them readily available. We also have, um, the camera view over here. This is a new feature in 2020 as well. And one of the problems it's solving is that in Seaverse, it's been very hard to know which way are you actually facing. Like when you start sculpting on a sphere, you're most likely sculpting on it upside down and on the back instead of the front, which if you were just inside ZBrush, that's fine. But the moment you're dealing with any kind of other projects, now you just export a model, which is upside down to somebody else. And that's really annoying. So here you can just see where you currently are and you can drag on this as well. You can just uh, drag around it. So now it's, you can navigate right here as well. This also makes it a lot easier for people who's new to ZBrush when they just want to, they just want to preview your model. What's cool about this is this actually isn't a 3D model per se. This is um, this is a series of screen grabs of a 3D model. So this doesn't impact performance whatsoever. You could load in a model here with like 30 million polys and it's not going to have any impact on performance. So just really useful. You can click these as well. And now you can just see that we go from, we go to the view and to the other view as well. So if you want to go top and bottom, we can just click these here. We also have uh, settings for these as well. If you go under preferences and we go under camera view, we can um, toggle between the different kinds of them as well. I don't really find this to be that practical because I really like the original one they've gone with. But if you want to have something like a skeleton, uh, then you can do that. Or if you just want to see front, left, whatever it might be, something emulating more like a view cube you had in Maya, this is cool. So you can just go back here until you hit the original one. Yeah, I find the original one honestly to be the best. The other one can just be kind of confusing. Yeah, it's very nice and very easy. Then we have a feature where you can adjust the poly painting. This is a feature we've been asking for for years and it's so cool to finally see it. Currently in, or before this version of ZBrush, if you want to actually adjust the colors here, you kind of 
had to export out a map or and then Photoshop and then color grade it there or you had to just repaint the whole thing. It's very painful. Now we can easily change the, the color of it. But if we go under polypaint and you see we have colorized, this needs to be enabled. And then we just go to adjust color. And here you can do all sorts of awesome stuff. I'm sure we're going to get more in depth into this later on in some other series. But for now, it just suffice to say that you can change the hue, the, the saturation, the intensity, all these kind of things. So we can just drastically change the look of this character right away to make it into an ice ogre. Oh, so one thing as well we forgot to mention is that uh, we are coming out with a full introduction to um, Seabrush 2020 pretty soon in a few weeks. And this is the end result of the sculpting part. So if you want to learn how to sculpt this, we have like a two and a half hour series of that where we sculpt in this and you can just easily follow along with that. So if you're from the future, check the card on the top right hand of your screen right about now and you should be able to get to it. <laughs> Then we have the deco brushes. The deco brushes are really cool. If we go under brush and then we hit the D key, we have deco and uh, we have three brushes here. And let's try the deco curve dots. So now we can draw out a curve. And if we just keep dragging on it, now you can just draw out this. This is amazing if you want some really cool shapes for like uh, for armor or you're doing some kind of environment for architecture, whatever it might be. This is really, really cool stuff. I, lo I really love the buildup of how it sort of like slips across the surface and makes these. It's not just these perfect tubes, but it like sort of leaves like a residue behind. So you can actually get some pretty cool organic shapes. So especially, even, like I say, like I'm primarily thinking about this for decorations for armor where you have some sort of medieval or, or roman style armor you could drag this out and and make like really cool patterns it would be really hard to actually make these kind of shapes without the deco brushes like this would be this would be a real pain in your ass to actually sculpt normally so the deco brushes are awesome then we have um, a new kind of brush called the hatch brush let's take a look at uh, this guy here so B, H, and here we have Hatch. So uh, this is a new sculpting mode. They call um, something like back and forth. And it just means that when I'm dragging like this, and now I'm going over here, it only drags from one direction. So now I get these really straight lines like this without it, um, without it building up the other way. So the alternative here is if we were to go into... Uh, the clay, clay Builder brush, this is, what it, this is what it would look like without the Hatch brush. And this is what it looks like with the hatch brush. So for me, I feel like it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's a very specialized brush, but I definitely see a use case for it where you're trying to build up form, maybe even trying to get more of a textural feel um, or sculptural feel to your piece. And then you can just do that, not cross hatching, but just hatching in one direction. It's definitely not something that I would use all the time, but it just, it does give you um, some more flexibility, I guess, more control over your strokes. And we have a feature which is project from undo. This is a really cool feature and it's a, one of the weird ones. Uh, it's pretty similar actually to the, the C project brush which is there originally and we were originally quite confused about what this brush actually was because it's advertised as it's you're working with the timelines and you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff but in reality this is just a really nice projection brush we just instead of um, just going under subtool project and then projecting like this or using the c project brush uh, you can just project from from one model to another yeah i think their branding in terms of the name is kind of misleading like i would prefer it if they just updated the c project brush or c project brush 2 or something like that uh, just because it does kind of the same thing like it seems like the projection algorithm is better but it, it, in essentially it is kind of like an updated version of it it feels like so we access this by hitting b h and here we have history recall so it's, it's a really nice brush and the way we access it is we now have we have two meshes here so we have a really smooth one and we have another one here which is really refined now these have nothing in common the two completely different poly count one is zero mesh to smooth and then subdivided and the other one here is just full on with subdivisions so what we want to do we want to smooth out parts of this model here we essentially want to project from here to here so what we can do we can go to the smooth version and then in the timeline here we can hold a control key and click here now you can see that it's now it now has this like orange border around it and this stores the model into memory and then what we can do we can just start to paint here and now you can see that we, we're projecting back 
from one model to another. This is different from the C project in a way that first is just better, but second off, you can it's since it's stored in memory, you don't have to have both visible at any one time. So it's a really really powerful brush for for projecting stuff back here. Yes, yeah, so it's just a lot easier to use in general. You do still run into the same kind of projection issues if you have a lot of difference between the two models. So you have to go in, smooth it out, and reproject again a little bit or re-history recall, I suppose. But in, in essence, it's, it's a really powerful brush to sort of like erase some parts of your model that you don't want to have yeah. details anymore. So what I was hoping for was that this here would actually look at uh, the normal of the surface instead of just comparing from a screen base. Because what, if we just sculpt from here now, it's going to look awesome. And then you rotate around and you're like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty messed up. <laughs> yeah, this isn't great. So you would still have to go in and really take care of where you're sculpting. You'd have to do it like one step at a time and just be careful with what you're doing. But yeah, super powerful brush. Uh, it really is one of my favorite features in 2020 because reprojection is something you're going to do a lot. Then we have the Move Infinity brush. This is really useful for all sorts of things. So let's see, let's see the problem it's trying to solve. Uh, let's have a brush here and uh, we want to we want to move this part here down like this the way you would do this traditionally now is you would mask it off and then you would you would use some kind of um, you would use some kind of transpose lines like this or the gizmo to use it but what's better is if you can just move here and just move it infinity with infinity the depth of infinity so we can do this if we do b m and here we have move infinite depth so what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to actually move infinity. So amazingly useful if you're doing hard surface or you're just doing big changes on characters and you just have to do them to infinity and beyond because now you can just quickly just change all of this. Yeah, it's like there's a projection that goes straight through the brush like infinitely. So anything that's within that scope of the brush just gets moved. It also has a different feel than a traditional move brush where the traditional move brush sort of... Uh, uh, you know, it's like constrained a little bit when you try to pull something too far, like it slows down a little bit. This one doesn't. So there are plenty of really cool features in ZBrush. We we are not going to be able to uh, cover them all in this series here, but we will we will do them. We will cover some of the better ones in more depth uh, later on. But for now, these are some of our favorite features. My favorite by far is the extractor brushes or the or the um, the from brush as it's called when you just hit the G key and just it just captures everything yeah. it's such a cool feature in every single version I always find that there's a lot of cool stuff and 90% of it is like you use it every once in a while but there is one feature you use all the time it might be an introduction of a hatch brush it might be the it might be the 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 extractor brushes uh, but uh, the extractor brushes for sure is what's gonna make an impact on our my workflow personally i'd love to hear what you guys think about uh, 2020 is there any features we're missing here or anything any cool little easter eggs you found there's always some of these out there so yeah let us know what you think and uh, make sure to like comment and subscribe and hit the little notification bell as well and thank you so much for watching if you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.